Hello and welcome. I call the channel The Jungle Nook and today I want to talk about my lighting. That's the most common question I get. It's the most frequently asked question regarding the house plants is what kind of lighting am I using? And I have it listed down in the description what it is and where I get it. And I'm going to talk about that in this video, but I also want to talk about how I use it. When I'm asked about the lighting, usually that's all I'm asked is what kind of lights am I using? And I really don't know exactly why you're asking me that without additional information. There could be uh, different reasons why you're asking me. But as far as the lighting that I'm using, I'm actually using fluorescent tubes. They are T5 high output grow tubes and they're 6400K. The T5, that just means the T means it's a tube and the five is the size of the tube. Not the length, but the, uh, the diameter of the tube. And the high output, what that just means is it's a little more energy efficient. Not as energy efficient as say a LED, but more than just a standard fluorescent tube. And you do need to make sure that they are a grow tube because that means there is um, a different kind of coating within the tube that will uh, mimic natural daylight pretty closely. Now, there's two different types. There's 6400K and I believe it's 2500K. The 6400K is what I use because that has a light spectrum that is a little more better for foliage. And the 2500K, that's more for flowering and fruiting, which I don't do any of that in here. I grow my plants for the foliage. I do occasionally get a flower though. But I use the 6400K high output fluorescent grow tubes. Now, I get them from Walmart, and they're about $120 a piece, U.S. dollars, and that is the fixture with the tubes included. Now, if you're asking me because you like the color, well, that's because it's a fluorescent tube. I do not like the pinks and you know, the purples and blues and stuff that come out of the LEDs. So I, I use the fluorescent tubes. And I think that the uh, color not only looks the best while I'm looking at the plants, but it's also better for filming as well for me. Now, if you notice, my lighting is at the center of the ceiling. And I do that so that all of the plants in this room their foliage all grows out towards the center of the room. So as I'm walking around enjoying my plants, they're all facing me and you know I get a real nice display. Now, I don't spin my plants. I don't do that because I want the leaves to grow so that they're efficient facing the available light. But I also do not move my plants around within the room because the, uh, the cell structure within the leaves, they are, uh, it's developed so that it's efficient for that amount of light in that space. If I were to take some of these plants and put them closer to a light or right up against a window, I could burn those leaves and they'd turn brown on me or if I'm taking a plant that is real close to one of the grow lights or right next to a window and I move that plant to a, an area that's not getting as much light, then what will happen is, is I'll start to get yellow leaves. So I, I leave my plants pretty much stationary so that they're efficient not only in their positioning but also for the, uh, the, the cell structure and the intensity of the available light. Something that I'm sure most of you are aware 
is that plants only engage in photosynthesis while they are in the light. But I wonder how many of you are aware that plants do not engage in photosynthesis efficiently the entire time they're in light. And sometimes they do not engage in photosynthesis at all while they're in the light. And I'm going to explain all of that. So that leads me into the next part here where if you're asking me about my lighting because you like how it's up at the ceiling, you like that because you don't see a bunch of grow lights and you don't see a bunch of cords and stuff. Well, the manufacturer of these lights, the tubes, I'm not referring to the fixtures. The fixtures really don't matter. It's the tubes. But these, these tubes, they need to be just like your, your LEDs, your high pressure sodiums, metal halides, whatever you're using, they need to be about 18 inches above the plant to be uh, really effective. Not only because of the, uh, the intensity of the light, the intensity of the light uh, is the most intense 18 inches above the plant. Every inch above that that you uh, get away from the, the leaf itself, the intensity of the light that is touching the leaf dramatically decreases. But also, um, when you're using these lights, the manufacturer will say, you know, four to six hours for a healthy plant at 18 inches above. Well, the farther away you get, the longer you're going to keep that light on because the light is not intense enough for the plant to really be engaging in photosynthesis very efficiently. But if you think about it, these plants growing in their natural habitats in the natural environment, they're mainly uh, understory plants. You know, they're, they're getting bright indirect light but throughout the day, you know, they're having different uh, intensities of light that is actually hitting the leaves because, you know, these things are growing out on the ground and they're shaded from trees and stuff or they're growing up the trunks of trees. And uh, the light isn't, you know, as intense the entire time that, uh, you know, during the day. So I keep my lights on for about 10 to 12 hours every day. But like I said, that doesn't necessarily mean the plant's actually engaging in photosynthesis. In order for a plant to engage in photosynthesis, it needs the proper nutrients from the soil. And that's why I use an all-purpose fertilizer. The brand really doesn't matter. What matters is that it's an all-purpose fertilizer because nearly all plants use the exact same nutrients and in the same way. Now, when you're picking out a all-purpose fertilizer, you know, they're going to have all of the secondary uh, nutrients as well as the trace elements. The primary nutrients, those are the first three that will be listed, nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium you don't want these to be the same you don't want to use a 10 10 10 5 5 5 or 20 20 20 you don't want it to be balanced because plants do not require these nutrients in equal parts you want it to be a ratio of 3 1 2 what i mean by that when you're picking out your all-purpose fertilizer you want to make sure that the primary nutrients, the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, you want to make sure that whatever that second number is, the phosphorus, you want three times as much nitrogen. And that's because a plant requires three times as much nitrogen as it has phosphorus available. The nitrogen is the primary nutrient used to create chlorophyll and chlorophyll is what converts the light into energy so that photosynthesis can occur photosynthesis uses the energy 
from the light that is created from the light and the chlorophyll to engage in photosynthesis to produce things like sugars, starches, proteins, and fats, things that it will not get from the soil. Like I said, you want to use a 3-1-2 ratio. Three times as much nitrogen as phosphorus, but the last number, the potassium, you want that to be somewhere in between the first two. If you're using a balanced fertilizer, you're going to have a nitrogen deficiency and the plant's not going to be able to create enough energy to engage in photosynthesis as long or as efficiently as you would want. But also, the plant's going to need uh, water. It needs to be well hydrated and it needs an adequate amount of moisture within the soil because it's the moisture in the soil that is absorbing the nutrients and as the plant is uh, absorbing that nutrient rich moisture uh, it's giving it everything it needs to be nice and healthy and to be able to continue to engage in photosynthesis the entire time that it's in light regardless if it's you know a real nice bright light or it's getting inadequate light if you just increase the amount of time that it's in the light and it has the nutrients and the moisture that it needs throughout the day it will be able to produce everything that it needs the sugars starches fats and proteins so that it gets enough of all of that to be a nice healthy plant pushing out lots of nice new foliage have a nice strong human uh, immune system be able to uh, regulate its hormones and just all the different functions that it needs if you've ever heard let your soil dry out in between watering they don't mean bone dry you don't want that soil to get you know real dry like a desert you don't want to create drought like conditions for your tropical varieties now I'm not talking about things like orchids or succulents or cacti, things like that, that do require the soil to really dry out in between waterings. Our tropical varieties, I know they've uh, developed a root structure and root system where they're used to it raining every single day and uh, they, don't like, they don't like the soil to overly dry out. Think of a sponge. If you submerge a sponge into the water, you take it out, you wring it out the best that you can, and you can't get no more water out of the sponge, but it's still moist. That's at the point where you'd want to add additional, uh, additional water. A few things that you can do without adding additional lighting to increase your plant's ability to engage in photosynthesis. If you're only watering your plants once a week or a couple times a month, continue doing that at the, the same frequency with the same amount of water, but try giving them just a little bit in between those times when you normally water, maybe only 15 or 20% the amount that you normally give it but that's extra in between when you would normally be watering it another thing that you can do is maybe once a month or every other month take a wet rag or paper towel something that's damp and just wipe off your leaves to get dust off of them even if you don't see any dust you might be surprised how much is actually there and what that will do is uh, allow more light to actually touch the leaf. Uh, so a couple of times a year, you could uh, wash the inside and outside of your windows. And if you have windows that you don't open and you have screens on them, but you don't open the windows, remove those screens to allow more light to come through. That extra water, keeping your tropical varieties a little more moist, the soil, 
cleaning off the leaves and the windows, removing screens, or if you're using artificial light to supplement your plants, try keeping that light on a little bit longer. Just be aware that if your soil is overly dry, keeping your lights on longer may not actually help the plant as much to engage in photosynthesis. Moist soil, not wet or waterlogged, but most moist soil is very important for our tropical varieties. Also, if you're using a lot of uh, organics in your soil, which is great for the plants, it's real important too that you don't let the soil dry out because there are uh, microscopic organisms that you don't even really see you might not realize they're even in there but there's bacterias and fungus and even tiny insects that are consuming the organic stuff the leaves twigs things like that and uh if, if you let that soil overly dry out in between waterings you can kill off that that population that colony that's within the pot that that microscopic environment that's in there that little ecosystem and you need that to be to be nice and healthy so that it's constantly breaking down those organics so that it is providing nutrients to the plants at all times. The thing about keeping your soil moist is you got to be careful uh, that you don't get root rot. You don't want wet saturated soil. Uh, that's why drainage is so important. I would never recommend using a pot that does not drain. But you do need well draining uh, soil as well. Perlite is great to add to soil so that it, it drains well and that there's little air pockets for uh, aeration. So, uh, the, the roots do need oxygen and you don't want them sitting in, in saturated, soggy soil. So drainage is really important. At the end of the video here, I'm gonna I'll, I'll put up a couple boxes with some videos that will really complement this one. But I hope this answered some of the questions. You know, I totally told you guys what I use and where to get it as far as the lighting, but also how I'm able to have my lighting so far above the plants and yet have them be able to produce enough of those things like the starches and sugars and things that I mentioned before because they're in the light for a prolonged period of time. And I do have windows too. Now I get very little light because it's wooded. You know, I got trees all around the house and uh, I don't get much light, but there is no substitute for natural sunlight. And, you know, I do get a few hours from this window, which does provide light almost almost to the center of this room for you know maybe three hours and i have another window over here that really only puts light in for about two hours and it only it only reaches a couple feet in but light scatters and you know there's no substitute for natural light my lighting is substituting the natural light it's working in conjunction with everything else that i mentioned in this video so i hope this this helped uh, feel free to leave questions. I am a small channel. It's no problem for me to respond to all of the questions. And uh, I hope this was helpful.